Um, as you're aware, there have been significant developments in Kabul overnight. We are working to reestablish security at Hamid Karzai International Airport following breaches overnight that emanated from the civilian side of the airfield. At this time, out of an abundance of caution, there are no flights coming or going, military or civilian, and this is because of large crowds that are still on the tarmac on the southern side of the field, the civilian side of the field. U.S. military forces are on the scene working alongside Turkish and other, and other international troops to clear the area of people. We do not know how long this will take. We've certainly seen all the dramatic video coming from the airport today, and we obviously don't want anyone else to get hurt. So we're going to work methodically in coming hours to restore a safe and secure environment so that air operations can resume. U.S. forces continue to arrive to assist in our mission to safeguard this ongoing evacuation. Currently, there are approximately 2,500 U.S. troops at the airport. Over the next 24 hours, we expect additional forces to arrive from both the 82nd Airborne Division and battalions from a Marine Expeditionary Unit. That should bring our force level to over 3,000 by tomorrow. We will continue to expand our security presence as needed, and to that end, the Secretary has authorized today the immediate deployment to Kabul of the 3rd Battalion of the 82nd Air Airborne uh, Division, their brigade, brigade combat team, that was headed to Kuwait. They, are, uh, they will, they will uh, flow in immediately, and uh, they'll be there in, uh, in, in coming days. There have been security incidents, incidents uh, at the field involving armed individuals shooting at U.S. forces. I want to reiterate that while our mission is not offensive, our forces have the inherent right of self-defense, and they will respond accordingly to threats and attacks. So in two separate incidents, U.S. forces did respond to hostile threats, and that resulted in the death of two armed individuals. On the support for vulnerable or at-risk Afghan citizens, uh, the Secretary uh, did approve a Department of State request for assistance yesterday uh, for the transport and temporary housing of Afghan special immigrant visa applicants, their families, and other individuals at risk. So in the United States, we are assessing facilities and support at two additional stateside installations. Uh, I'm uh, going to refrain from identifying those installations today as we continue to work uh, the notification process. Uh, this would be in addition to the existing facility that we have at Fort Lee. Our aim at these three facilities would be over time, three to four weeks from now, be able to provide support for up to 22,000 at-risk individuals. We will not have that capacity immediately. It will take some time to build it out. We are also providing air transportation for other at-risk individuals to facilities located in a third, uh, in a third country partner nation, uh, a battalion-sized unit uh, already in the Central Command area of responsibility is prepared to also assist with processing and medical care for up to 8,000 at-risk individuals there. I, you uh, now, I want to reiterate uh, the notice from the U.S. Embassy in, uh, in Kabul, that, Kabul that all U.S. citizens, special immigrant visa applicants, and others uh, should shelter in place until security can be reestablished at the airfield and an orderly process can be established to marshal them onto the field and to get them out of the country. We are aware that there are a number of civilian groups, including media organizations, that are seeking assistance in coordinating departure flights. We are communicating that information with our forces on the ground and our partners at the State Department, and we're working as best as we can to assist these media outlets.